Mr. All right, everyone, I have 5 p.m. Today is Tuesday, July 9th. I will call the Richland County Executive and Finance Standing Committee to order. Roll call, please. And we got Brenda. Yes, sir. Caro. Here. Reddish. You. Oh, there you go. Sorry. Manning. Here. Gill. Here. Glassbrenner. Here. Turk. Here. Frank. Here. Williamson. Here. Cooley. Here. You have um, everybody here, sir. 100 percent attendance. Thank you, everyone. Verification of the open meeting law compliance. Yes, sir. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Agenda approval. Item number four, 21 point is what I have. Mr. Manning, Supervisor Sorry. Manning, Supervisor Rennish, any discussion on the agenda? Anything that needs to be moved or replaced? If not, all those in favor of approving the agenda as presented. Oh, yeah, oh, Mr. Wendell. Did we, since Mr. Manning is going to Matt is on, did we want to do this part first? Sure. We can move 16 up to, you want to do public comment and then let him go before reports? I defer to you, Mr. Chair. Just wanted to point out that we had him on the line. Comments from our group go with public comment. So if somebody wants to have a comment, then they can leave before we go into closed session because they're going to have to move anyway. I would say yes. All right, Mr. Frank. So we will move item number 16 up to after item number six, public comment. All those in favor of the changes that presented signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, say nay. All right, approve the agenda as is. Uh, minutes from June 11th. If there are no corrections from anybody, I will stand them as presented and approved by myself. Public comment, we are up to item number six, public comment. Nothing. All right. We will go to item number 16. Closed session. The chair may entertain a motion to enter closed session pursuant to Wisconsin statute section 19.851F, considering financial, medical, social, or personal histories or disciplinary data or specific persons, preliminary considerations, specific personnel, problems, or the investigation of charges against specific persons, except where paragraph B applies, which, if discussed in public, would be likely to have a substantial adverse effect upon the reputation of any person referred to in such histories or data, or involved in such problems or investigation. Consideration, consideration of public officials. Mr. Manning makes the motion. A second by Ingrid Glassman. I know as of last night, I don't know if we've done that, but on Southwest Tech Board, when we go into closed session, we do roll call. So I will call for a roll call vote. Miranda, please. Caro. Here. Yes. Aye. <laughs> Brennish. Aye. Manning. Yeah. Gill. Here. Glassbrenner. Aye. Turk. Aye. Frank. Aye. Williamson. Aye. Cooey. All right. All right. We are now in closed session, and, and who are we going to allow to stay? Administrator. Okay, everyone. We got everybody back. Uh, we will reconvene here. We're going on to item number seven on the agenda. You good, Mr. Cooey? All right. Uh, item number seven, A, letter A, Veteran Service Officer Quarterly Report. Good evening. She was. Um, so in the packet is the reports that I make quarterly. Uh, they're two Excel spreadsheets. And um, they just discuss how many visitors we've had versus how many forms we've completed so far this year. If you guys have time to review those and questions you have, I'll be happy to answer them. A lot of you guys have seen them from previous committees that we've been on. It's pretty standard. Anybody with questions on the veteran quarterly report? And I also wanted to report that we did receive our annual grant for $1,688. And that's for 2024. 
And that's all I have if anyone has, has any questions. Good, all good. Thank you, dear. Moving on to 7B. That you, administrative report. Budget overview and campus update, 7B. Okay, so um, I sent out an email late today, so I'm sure many of you have seen that. Um, with a lot of updates that came out late today, um, Senator Volwig and um, Representative Kurtz both have called me in the last 24 hours to verify that in fact our funds were released today for the $2 million grant, which is very, very exciting. So um, WBDC will be uh, voting on the final version of the application, and that will be happening on the 23rd. We do not know what that application is going to look like or will look like. Um, I'm going to be making some calls, seeing what I can find out as far as if they're going to be adding any additional you know, stipulations or what that process is going to be so that we can be prepared so that when and if it, it opens up and it's posted, we're ready to go um, so that we can get our, our application in and uh, start moving on those dollars. Uh, Venture Architects was here two weeks ago again, um, reviewing some of the space within the courthouse, wanting to kind of walk through and visualize some of the discussions that have been had with some of the departments here in the courthouse on needs, um, space reconfiguration, what works in the spaces that are here now, what doesn't work, um, you know, kind of just talk through if we were to have to remain in the space here and to remodel, what would that need be, things like that. So um, that worked out really, really well. We've kicked off our 2025 budget calendar. Uh, we had department head meeting on Monday, walked through it with everyone. Actually, some departments already have their budgets into us, which is wonderful. So we're really doing a great job on track with that. Larry and I will be meeting then individually as we did last year with each department, going line by line through all of those expenditures, all of those revenues. Um, for that initial meeting, we'll put together that preliminary budget, we'll see where our numbers come in, and then any areas of concern, we'll meet again, go through, identify areas where we think we need to take a hard look, maybe walk some numbers back, um, make some adjustments, things like that. I did also share a document today that was the 2023 memo that was released on shared revenue um, and what their plan was for 2024 and 2025, um, which is a 2.3% increase for 2025. It's not significant. We haven't seen anything else that would indicate that it'll, it will be much more. Considering the significant increase we got last year, I'm not complaining in any way, shape, or form but we haven't had any indicators that it will it will deviate from that at all. Um, so we're planning for that amount this year um, right now, and so we'll, we'll go from there. As far as the wage study goes, right now we're holding on wages. We're not anticipating any wage increases in the budget um, because we're waiting to see how we come in and how we're gonna plan for that implementation um, there. Um, campus update. So we officially have taken over the campus, as you all know. Um, they shuttered the doors and they painted over the sign. Um, I have a giant picture of keys sitting in my office that, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's quite interesting for sure. Um, but um, I'm getting several emails, phone calls, things from interested parties in the community, schools, different things like that, and I am responding to each and every one of them, um, pretty much giving them the same response of, you know, we're awaiting the results of our feasibility study. After that, the reconfiguration committee and the county board will be tasked with making decisions on how we move forward and what that process looks like as soon as we have identified that process, we will reach out to everyone and let them know what that will be. Um, so I have compiled a list of interested parties. I have all that information so that I can make sure that we do that. Um, 
you know, a lot of people wanting to go in and just kind of take things. And so I have ideas. Um, I've spoken with some of you on, you know, I think we're going to have to just ensure equal opportunity for all to have access to the items inside that, you know, we decide as a board, um, you know, what we can't use or don't want to retain. Um, so, um, with that, I think that is everything that I'm thinking of right now, unless you all have any questions for me. Mr. Gill. Uh, what do we anticipate getting the results of the feasibility study? In the next week and a half to two weeks, is, and they said they're, they're on track to, uh, to provide that in a lot of time. The original estimate was July 15th, just to throw an idea, a date out there. Any other questions on the administrator's report? If not, let's move on to number eight, resolution approving purchase of 15 desktop computers. Who's handling that one? I am. Okay. Um, so annually, our um, budgets for desktop computers. Um, she put out four quotes, and this is the lowest quote. So she's asking for approval to, with the 2024 CIP dollars that she had, uh, purchase these 15 desktops from JCOMP Technologies in the amount of $14,385. So do we have 15 that went bad? Or is it just? We, re we have them on an annual replacement schedule. Six years ago. Yep. 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 Six years are hanging on. That's, 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 that's long, long for today's age. Right. Yes. Okay, they're on a six-year schedule? Yep, they're on a rotation. Yep. And there's uh, both, if you didn't look, both quotes All are in. All quotes are in here, yeah. In your file. Okay. Mr. Carroll. Uh, <clears throat> the replaced computers, is there a, a cascading level of who gets the old ones, or do they literally get out the door? That I don't know. I think they kind of keep some for backup, don't you? Yeah, depending on the age. Um, we keep some, and sometimes the oldest one doesn't necessarily get replaced with the new one, because sometimes the old ones may be like a part-time position, so a full-time person would get the new one, and then theirs will get cascaded down to part-time That's position. what I was getting at. Okay. Yeah. Good question. So, Any further questions? Yes. Mr. Cooley. So as you get 15 computers every year, what do we do with the other 15 that we got rid of? Do they go back? They get recycled. They get recycled, but you know, do you wipe them and sell them, or is that what you do? We wipe the hard drives. They just they just get recycled. They're really not worth anything. They're not worth years. because I was just curious because we do the same thing. So sometimes they sell them back for pennies on the dollar. Or whatever. Any further questions on the computer replacement? If not, I entertain a motion to move this resolution on. Mr. Greenwich makes the motion, seconded by Mr. Frank. I think we've had enough discussion on it. All those in favor of moving on the resolution to purchase 15 desktop computers for $14,385, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. All right. More computers. Nine, air conditioner for the server room. So this was an emergency purchase um, because the air conditioner went out in the server room so they had a window unit going and they had a, um, a stand up AC unit going just to try to keep it cool enough in there um, that obviously is not a long term solution so we had to order an AC unit in the amount of $10,299 so obviously it wasn't one that I could just approve so here we are asking for approval for the replacement of that unit for the server room. Which server room is this? Across at MIS. The main server room, oh, the big right. one. Yeah. <laughs> Not a good deal. I move to approve. <laughs> Carol and who seconded? Cooey. Cooey. Carol and Cooey on that one. Any other further discussion? Otherwise, we're approving the purchase of a $10,299 air conditioner for the server room. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. All right. Yeah, number 10. Supporting resolution supporting calling for state investment in mental health funding. 
All right, this just came out yesterday. That's why it is on this agenda. It didn't come out in time to make it onto the Health and Human Services agenda. And I spoke with Trish and we wanted to make sure that we got it on the county board agenda for this month. Um, as we all know, mental health funding is sorely lacking in the state. And so um, this is an initiative to increase mental health funding. And so I put the white paper in your packet. You can read more in depth on what the funding is for. Um, but this is the resolution that WCA provided and asked that we support. So I'm asking for approval to support an increased state funding for mental health. Uh, motion by Glassbrenner, seconded by Manning. Any further discussion? Yeah, so is this Wisconsin County's uh, language that they're asking to go out to all the counties to use? Yes. Okay. It is. Any other questions on this? If not, all those in favor of moving this on to the full county board, supporting mental health funding, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Okay. 11, discussion of possible action repairs to the West Bridge on the UW campus. Mr. Elder. So with uh, everything that's happening in, at the campus in question, the bridges have been a talking point for many years. Uh, the bridges themselves are not available for any kind of a state or federal funding because they sit on a private drive within the city of Richland Center, even though they are owned by the county. So they do not get any type of funding assistance. So in order to uh, proceed forward with any type of anything with the campus, you need access in there for trucks and the bridges need to be replaced. So I approached the reconfiguration committee with the thought process of starting with hydraulic analysis to see what the viability would be to replace them with maybe culverts and it would all be in-house dollars because there is not going to be any assistance with this. Uh, the hydraulic analysis was done, they came forward with uh, doing bridges and that was also confirmed with the DNR through their recommendations. So we contracted with MSA to do the hydraulic analysis and then as we proceeded forward and decided to do the bridge we had them uh, tighten down their estimates. Uh, come forward with the full numbers for replacement of at least one bridge for next year to get the ball rolling on it. So everything that's in your packets will be the hydraulic analysis and the cost estimates for replacing the one bridge, which would be the West Bridge, which gets you the best access in there easy to identify. Mr. Chair. Did you talk to him about raising it to foot? Yeah, that Thank recommendation you. has been passed over. So the hydraulics you could put a culvert in? You could, but it's just not, um, the DNR have major concerns as they want to address that with uh, with trout population in the area. And then obviously with the culvert, it may restrict it enough that it's not going to handle a 100 year flood. So they recommend doing a, basically a cookie, cookie cutter bridge design. Okay, thank you. And what Mr. Reyes is referring to, those of us that are on, what is that mean? <laughs> Public works. <laughs> Uh, during the flooding event, whatever day that was, it was actually the bridge didn't handle all the water coming. Bridge became a dam. So the suggestion was made to hey, what about raising a foot? But then there was a hydraulic study done years ago when that bridge was installed. So. Right. But uh, any questions for Josh on that? It's it's the first step in getting moving forward with everything out there, Mr. Carroll. So, so what are we moving forward for tonight? Is it just the, the design or what, what are we what are we moving forward? The, per, the actual replacement of West Bridge at the purchase price, I think it's just over six hundred some thousand dollars. Yeah. I guess my concern was um, this is the engineer's estimate and we're gonna have to come up with money to pay for that. And I'm just wondering if, if how accurate that is. That is within, um, they have a 3% contingency built on and that is 100% as accurate as they can possibly make it. Remember the first estimates were a little low. I felt they were low. I approached MSA again, tighten down your numbers. I want extremely accurate numbers and they did so. I don't think we're gonna get any more accurate numbers than this until construction is completed and the final costs are in. And in my opinion, that 
hopefully the money we receive. Some of it could be used for this. We, we can't do anything out there unless we can get in there with trash. Good, but we just don't want to get as by we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other questions for Mr. Elder? Otherwise, the resolution would be to move this on the Polk County Board to, for approval to move forward with replacing the West Bridge in the general area of 466000 to 490000 Are we identifying where this funding is coming from? What's that about? Are we identifying where the funding is coming from? It comes out of Josh's budget. <laughs> 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 You know, in our initial discussions, we talked about you know, we still have a chunk of funding left for ARPA, but with the release of the two million, we would have option of where right, to draw right. that funding. Right, right. I have that, but that's when this might get started. I don't, I don't, I mean, is it going to be all, is it all going to happen right at the right time if we're approving this? Is that money come in? So my understanding goal? was that construction would not be able to start until 2025 2025 oh, okay. right. so okay. i believe we will have those dollars in place yeah. by then oh okay. the highway department is paying for all the engineering and hydraulic analysis as it continues on we're doing that out of our normal uh budget but then when it comes to the act of construction that's where the money would have to be spoken for okay second by mr frank any further discussion mr manning Besides raising it a foot, is it such a thing or would be a lot more cost that it has an arch in it? Well, in order naturally it will have an arch in it, but uh, it would raise the cost. I mean, you're talking more material. Is it going to be any longer than what we have there now? So mm -hmm. Not there much, no. Not a couple feet of what's already there. Any further questions? If not, let's vote. All those in favor of moving this on to Full County Board, replacement of the West Bridge at the UW campus facility, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. All right. Uh, radio Tower, number 12, discussion, possible action approval of change order for Radio Tower Project Bird Study. So um, we found out that we couldn't move forward with a portion of this project until there was a study done about the birds um, and I know Barb talked about this before I don't know what kind of bird it is but at any rate there's a bird study that needs to be done so that is what this change order is for it is in the amount of $35,000 so um, this is the amendment and then um, the original is back in the documents from very very early on in the approval process way back Clint signed the original document and it's in the original documents folder so but you know they sent it to me and said Candace will you sign this and I said no I won't because it's a $35,000 change order and I'm not signing it until it gets approved. Mr. Eddie, <laughs> I have three questions. Long. I thought it was three. Sitting the last two years on public safety we asked that consultant every meeting we had, are we on budget? Why do we hire a consultant? And then we get, then we see something like this. So if I may, and Go public safety to be discussed this. Um, this came up as they were looking at the site for the tower build, and there was concerns of a nest and a unique species of bird for that territory and once that happens and it gets flagged you have to follow through and check as it turns out that species is not there does not exist there is what we reported to at the last public safety meeting so i'm curious as to what if this bill is for something they've already done because uh public safety said that when i talked to the, the committee at that point that it was not okay. It was, it was okay. Supervisor Carroll. Well, I'm looking at it. That's the total cost. Supervisor Carroll. Under the change order one column. Yep. yep. It says it's 35, the additional total fee amount increase being requested under the change order is $35,700 for the total, project total is $339,250. Well, they the should new label, label their column, yeah. column change order one. Yeah, it, it's, right. it's labeled one. Yeah. I would be in favor of uh, 
Mr. Frank finding out more or somebody about Yeah, I can definitely do that. Yeah, um, because if they don't need to do it, because Barb just sent me this and said, will you sign it? And I said no, and not to like get board approval. And that was on, I right. if, that's, if this is just for that study, then you know, we need to, that, I have nothing to follow up on that. Um, I know that there was some change orders because of some other things that were, that we're still keeping up with budget, change orders happened. Yeah, absolutely. Mr. Elder, comment? Yeah, so they also had brought up concern about a bad study. So I actually reached out to the DNR on this issue. Because there is no state and federal money involved, this is all borrowed by the county, it negates you from doing a lot of these uh, okay. searches to see if there's any endangered species or whatever, because you're, you've signed the lease agreement, you're going basically through private land. It, it may not be, need to be done, so I would definitely investigate it to that point yeah. if, if it's necessary or not. My other question would be, we changed a few sites, Bob, right? Yes. Yep. So that, we may find that out. So I would say we right. can... Oh, if, if I can speak? Oh, yes. Yeah, go ahead, please. No, no, no. My understanding Painting is the study's already done. We had to do a study to build the road at the Westport site. It's already done. The birds don't exist. So I, I'm assuming this is what that bill is. Now, I can't, I wouldn't definitive say that that's what this bill is, but that was my understanding. I think they'll be fine Wait for another month. I would hold them to find out the clarification. I would say we count this as no action and bring it back with much further information. Column headings in our spreadsheet. You get a hold of that, guys. <laughs> All right, moving on to 13. Discussion and possible action provision of corporation council services through contract to staff or county employee. 13. Okay, so last month we had a discussion on whether or not this committee would be interested in entertaining the idea of having corporation counsel as a county employee or not and what would that look like what could that look like so after that I met with Amy Forehand, um, attorney Wendell uh, Larry and um, DA Harper just to kind of talk about um, where we're at um, I'd already met with Trish I know what their level of need is over at human services and I know they feel like they could definitely utilize more support there um, you know Amy struggles to keep up with the volume of work that they have now and that's with attorney Wendell assisting at times and so um, you know and in looking at the cost so thus far this year attorney Wendell has has for 293.57 hours and um, you know had he been working for us as a county you know at billing at $125 an hour you know had he been a salaried employee that would have been you know at $52 an hour which is what we are paying roughly for uh, attorney forehand he would have been on the job for 705 hours so it's a pretty significant difference. Um, now, again, if we chose to have corporation counsel in-house, I want to be very clear, this would be a job that would be posted, we would interview, this would be a normal hiring process. But he is the person fulfilling the duty now, that is why it was very important to have his opinion on what the duty entails, how often is he working, what type of cases is he working on, because he does spend his time in various ways across the county. Um, so do I think, did we think, realistically in our conversations, that it made sense to have someone that would be a full-time, you know, attorney, um, and then have, you know, Amy continue on in her capacity so that she's not having to take on and work these extra hours that she is working to try to keep up and not having to struggle to try to <laughs> maintain everything that she's trying to do as well. And the consensus was it would make sense. The recommendation from everyone at the table was this would make a lot of sense because that extra work over at Human Services could be absorbed then by an in-house corporation counsel. A lot of the child support work could be then absorbed by an in-house corporation counsel. Additional support for Health and Human Services could be absorbed. And then a lot of this 
hourly work that is being done um, and additional projects that we really would like to have done, all of the contract review, a lot of the things that were, you know, Mike struggles to get to at times, there would be a person here at all times to be able to get to those projects. Um, so, you know, that's what the conclusion we came to as far as what a wage would actually look like for a contracted corporation council. Um, you know, that varies. And so that would be something that we would establish through the wage study, um, you know, based on the market. Um, would it be more than what we're paying now, potentially, but year to date, and we're in July, we've paid um, $36,695 for Attorney Wendell, and, you know, close to $11,341 for Attorney Forehand. So, not especially. Um, so, there are benefits to both. I, I think it's really up to you as a committee how you want to continue to do that. Mr. Carroll. Does HHS currently get any outside legal counsel? They do not. Um, their legal counsel is Mike, and they're, they have funding as well. So realistically, when you if you were to bring counsel in, they have a lot of offsetting dollars. So this salary piece would be offset then through some of those additional program funding, and that's all broken up depending on how that, that time would be spent. So, you know, let's say child support, it's 66% uh, reimbursement. So if he's spending time in child support, 66% of that time is reimbursed. I know for adult protection, there's part of that that's reimbursed. Child protection, some of that's reimbursed. So depending on the hours he's spending for each area, then we can estimate X amount of that time can be basically billed back through that and that salary can be recouped. So we have that, that opportunity as well. I guess my question, there is some expanded potential need. Oh, absolutely. There is definitely an expanded need. Okay. Trish um, could definitely use some more hours of support for um, some of the units over there and additional training that they just would absolutely love to have. Um, so I definitely could use, we could definitely use that as well. Yes. I'm not sure how all the dollars would work out, whether it would turn out to be a savings or not, but it would seem to benefit the county immensely to have the extra legal resources available when we need them. Uh, to provide better services to our departments and to the county and to the citizens of the county. So even if it did wind up being more expensive, to me it feels like that might still be money well spent. Mr. Mr. Frank. Okay, so I guess my question is we don't know what the wage study is, we don't know what wages we're going to be able to do next year, we don't know what the budget is. I'm, I'm concerned that you know, the, the current employees, I want to make sure that we're treating them fairly in the upcoming year. Um, I don't know what this is going to cost. I'd like more information to know. I think we can get a better picture. I think we've got a good start in the discussion. But what are some closer numbers? What, what are other counties doing for an attorney and wages so we can get a picture on this? Um, I guess I'm not ready to move in this until I've got more information. Makes sense. Supervisor Cooley. Same thing? Take the word right out of my mouth. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Have we looked into, like, the insurance part of, do we pay your insurance now, Mike? No. My, oh, well, you right pay right. into it. Our, my firm covers me no, under there. We included in this break. Right. Well, then we would be now responsible for your insurance this way, though, no, wouldn't we? Or some of you. Some percentage. Or the head. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so the whole package is wages and benefits and retirement and I mean, the package. <coughs> I think he's speaking specifically to malpractice insurance. Right. Oh, okay. But all of that does play in. And I mean, what I'm seeing right now for wages is anywhere, you know, starting can be as low as 45 an hour, but that's pretty low. Um, and up to anywhere between you know 55 
to 60 an hour typically in the private or you know in the public sector um, you know and that's usually top of the scale type you know in a smaller county but again that's where I want Tessa's opinion on that you know that's just me doing a little surveying I want to see the actual market data and I did email her she just hasn't gotten back to me yet um, but you know that's that's ballpark um, and as I said, I mean, I know what we're paying is forehand after quite a bit of time, which is, you know, 50, almost $53 an hour. But, um, Supervisor know. Reg, could we, since you brought that up, um, we, and we have records, could we get the total of last year for Corp Council, for Amy, for HHS, the total hours that we had involved in attorneys mm -hmm. last year? Well, no. I had all that information. Hold on. I have it here in one of these pages. Um, we just, I don't know how they started breaking this down um, or when they started breaking it down by department because I've got some by department costs here. But so in 2021, um, it was $19,930.00. 90 cents for uh, court counsel and. Do they break it down by hour? Or oh, yep. That was for court counsel and then. Attorney. No, I'm sorry. Total cost in 2021 for both court counsel and attorney forehand was sixty thousand nine hundred eighty-one dollars and seventy-six cents. In 2022, it was sixty-one thousand seven hundred thirty-one dollars and seventy-six cents. Um, in 2023, it was $73,215.98. Oh, I, I told you the wrong data for 2022, I'm sorry, $64,495.72. <laughs> and then year to date now, we have $40,355.75 added together. So. Would I be correct in assuming we've had some wage changes in that time period, mm -hmm. correct? So that doesn't really answer how many hours that represents. No, that's just the total total dollar amount. Yeah. Total dollar amount. Um, I can have them run the reports. Well, it's all by wage. It's not by hours. It's just by just by wages. But I can pull the invoices. I does mean, it separate out between me and me? And if I may, I can say on my part, you know, I'm contracted for eight hours. And it generally works out more than that. My wage has not changed, I think, for a number of years. So mine hasn't changed. So Amy, you're contracted eight hours a week? Yep. Yeah. Okay. But if you put in 10, Amy, Steve Williamson, do you get paid for 10? No, I, I get paid for eight hours a week, okay. no matter if I were 10, 15, whatever I want to okay. for the county, I get paid for eight. Yeah. And our rates, yeah. actually, in our last contract uh, renewal, one of the things that we pointed out was that our rates were going to go up, but we weren't sure when, and so the county actually locked in the 125 uh, that I was first hired under. So it has not changed that in the last so. Another 10 years with that. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, then you, you might meet the boss lady for that conversation. <laughs> so I, I'm guessing we would potentially see an increase there, but I can have them. You, I, I well, can't I mean, say confidently there would be an increase. The wages haven't changed, and clearly we're utilizing more hours. Right. So what I'm hearing, we want a little more information. I agree with right. Mr. Cooey, Mr. Craig. I agree. Right. I agree. It's still okay. So Amy works eight hours a week. Mike works whatever we need him to work. So if we go to a full-time person, they're going to work 2,080 hours a year, right? Correct. So that's much different than what we're paying for right now. Well, we're paying 125, right? Well, yeah, but we're not they're very limited hours. You, you see what I'm getting at? I mean, he's only worked like how many hours so far this year? That's why I wanted to, I wanted to have a broken down my policy. Yeah, yeah, we need to, we need to see it. So, that. right, at $125 an hour, and he's worked 293 right. hours. 
if we were to hire him at, let's say, just anyone, I'm sorry, anyone, anyone at $52 an hour, that would be $109,000 a year. Yep. Okay. If it were $41 an hour, it would be less than that. So, I mean, again, it would base, be based on that 2080. The thing is, it's in hours. Yeah, you're going to get paid more. So, if, if we're only using 600 hours a year. But we're only, we're only using it because. I understood. I, I, I get. What I'm saying is, is to make a full time person, now we're going to gain four or 500 hours a year, which. Most likely, that's where Dave's point is. Most likely, it'll justify itself. Absolutely. Now, I don't know how much HHS more. I mean, that's the one, right? That they get paid, they get reimbursed for everything, pretty much everything they do to some extent. Yep. And you have to utilize that to the best of our ability. And if that means, so I, we need more information, but there's a lot to this. Yep. Right? There there's is. a lot to this, you know, because. That hundred, you know, hundred thousand is that, but then you got another thirty, forty thousand benefits. So you're up around a hundred, and this is just a round number. But I mean, we need to know what Trish can gain. Yep. And I mean, the hours we're going to gain, and, and we need to add yeah, yep. more to this together. So. Yep. Perfect. Yep. Enough. Stop on that. Any other questions? Information? Uh, we are up to. Committee appointments, item 14, Southwest Regional Planning Commission, the Board of Adjustments, and Southwest Wisconsin Community Action Program. Those are yours as well. Yeah, so I, I do believe we're going to have to convene the committee on the committees. Um, reason being that we, um, we need to appoint Commissioner or Supervisor Caro to the Southwest Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission. Um, we were also going to rip, uh, appoint Jeffrey even, but he is no longer going to be with the county, so we need to find someone else to appoint from the board. We need to um, discuss transitioning the Board of Adjustments to uh, Board of Supervisor members just because there are um, the members that we have now are community members. They have been on there for 30 years, which violates um, all sorts of things. And so we, we need to get into compliance with that. And it's very hard to find community members that want to volunteer to be on that board. But we cannot have members of the Natural Resources Committee also sit on the Board of Adjustments. So we need to have that discussion. And then we also need to find a replacement for Supervisor Harwick on the Southwest Wisconsin Community Action Program. Uh, the commitment for that, the time commitment, is just too extensive for her. She can't, she can't get away that much. And so um, I just wanted to have that discussion at this committee level and um, let you all know that we probably need to convene the committee on committees to have that discussion and make those committee assignments. Anybody have any questions on those? If you're thinking of somebody to put on there with Mr. Carroll. For the other appointment for that, it doesn't necessarily have to be a county board member, correct? It was Ray Schmitz formerly. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. It can be a community so. member, yeah. All right, if not, I think we're up to 19. Any correspondence? No, we're not. Oh, we missed 15. Oh, yeah, 15. We need to fill our county treasurer. Okay, that's you again. No, Mr. Turk. Mr. Turk. Oh, good. Yes. So we so have received notice from Jeffrey even that he's resigning as county treasurer. Uh, when this happened before, we advertised and solicited letters of interest, and we vetted those candidates and uh, appointed someone as a board. Uh, that's what we've done in the past. That's how we got the job. Um, we could do that again if that would be the process you'd like to follow. Um, I'm of the mind that just because we've done it that way before it doesn't always mean that that's necessarily the best way, but it doesn't mean it's a bad idea either. So I just wanted to have some discussion. What would your preference be for how we approach filling that position? Is it an elected position? 
It is an elected position. It is up for election in November, and Jeff is already on the ballot. And the new person will not be able to be on the ballot. So it's going to be fun. So what, what are we... Yeah. Ballots are already printed. Yeah. I believe they will have to be on the ballot as a registered write-in yeah. when the time comes. So what... Yeah. There's statutes that tell us what we have to do, right? And there's, there's, there's a rule that the other one would be the counties association is the next step to tell us what we're able to do within well, their reasoning, right? It hasn't been that long ago that we, we filled that position. We also filled the county clerk position that way because we had a vacancy midterm. That's why I wouldn't change what we've done is yeah. because I think that the, that's the process. Yep. I mean, yep. township, same thing because I got the same problem over there. So. There's due diligence you have to follow. You just can't. I mean, if it was, it, you know, and we couldn't do it anyways. Now I don't even know if you can at the county level, but <coughs> like at township level, you can take it to your annual meeting and then get it go from elected to appointed, and then you clear that up. Now that yeah. may be something. I don't know if it's capable at county level. I don't believe so but, because these are constitutional you know what I mean? officers at the county. The thing level, of it so. is, is. What it does is when people leave, then you have the avenue to replace. Right. Where this, I think you're going to have to probably follow what we've done in the past. Is there a deputy that covers this at this point? There is a deputy in place. Okay. So, I, you know, Jeff, we're hit by a bus tomorrow, and I'm not wishing that on him. Um, but the deputy would assume the roles of the clerk, or right. the treasurer. So, if he goes to another position, they would assume the same. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I think if we got a process of working one in charge treasurer. But the other thing is, if the deputy's there, we don't have to really. I mean, we need to fill the position and get that. But. Or we can wait until November. It was close yeah. enough. We had that choice to go. I, but the problem. Yeah. The thing I, I think said, our preference would be to fill the position. I agree. I'm just saying that. Yeah. I, the problem is, is all this new stuff's going through right now that Jeffrey's trying to teach the town, the town treasurer. Yep. So there's a big. <laughs> yes. And to Jeff's credit, he has so said he'd be willing to help us in the transition to the new person. So uh, we, credit him for that. Okay. Yeah, we definitely need to fill it. Yeah. And sooner than later. But it, it may change in November. Yeah. Well, I think we advertise it. Yeah, and the deputy can apply, correct? Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Recommend you need a motion on that? You just want. I just wanted to have discussion about it rather than just assume what we should do. So. How long do we want it advertised? Um, so I can. Justin is online, but so that we know. That was a couple weeks. Two probably, weeks. Right? What's the standard? I mean, I'm trying to. You may want to get it out more than that. We usually do two weeks for most positions. We've, had, always be kicked in. we've yep. had very good luck recruiting. So right. two weeks it is. Okay. Supervisor Gill, you had a question? Yeah, my question was, did you have an alternate process in mind when you brought this up? Not necessarily. I just wanted to bring it out to sure. say, again, that feeling that just because we've always done something a certain way doesn't necessarily mean that, sure. you know, that's just the way we should keep doing it. But I'm glad we had a chance to discuss it. So begin the process. Any further questions on that? Okay. Uh, now, correspondence. Nothing. Future agenda item 20. Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, again, raising the issue of by resolution declaring this body the ethics board. So we should probably bring that next month. And yeah. I have a draft resolution okay. prepared and I'll submit that to the clerk for publication. Okay. That'll be anybody else, a uh, future agenda item, something that we need to cover? Mr. Carroll, you want to become our unpaid engineer consultant? <laughs> well, and I, I think we'll put the uh, Corporation Council discussion back on. Hopefully I can have some of the market data and uh, also have some bullet points from, from Trish um, for you. I know she can use the help, so I'll, I'll get some more data on that. Have you uh, good question. I'll talk to Larry. I know the fee schedule is like this close, so. And what is it? Uh, what are we in July? August. We'll have some more information on the campus. Right there. Fee 